In this video, we take another brief look at representing adding data to and removing data from stacks and queues. We covered all of this content in detail when we introduced you to stacks and queues back in SLR 14, data structures. As such, in terms of pure theory, there's nothing you need to know that we haven't already covered. However, as the exam board has added this additional point to the specification, you may also be asked coding questions about these data structures in the component 2 paper on algorithms and programming. So a little note from the exam board then. The OCR clarification document states you should have experience of using both data structures, understand the differences and similarities between them, need to be able to add and remove data from stacks and queues, understand how pointers are used in stacks and queues, need to understand how they can be implemented, for example, using an array of pointers, and need to be able to read, correct, and write algorithms to add and remove data and manipulate data items in stacks and queues. Now, as we said, we've covered this previously, but it may have been a while since you've watched the video. So we're gonna kind of give a summary recap here. A stack is a data structure that is essential for a computer to operate. Items are pushed onto the top of a stack, and when they're added to it and popped off of the stack when they're deleted from it. It's also possible to peek at the top item without deleting it. Imagine a stack of coins. A coin can only be added to or removed from the top of the stack. The stack is known therefore as a last in, first out or LIFO structure. The item to be pushed onto the stack must also be the first item to be popped off. The stack pointer always points to the node at the top. Any attempt to push an item onto a full stack is called a stack overflow. Conversely, an attempt to pop an item off an empty stack is called a stack underflow, and both of these potential outcomes should be considered before attempting to push or pop an item. A stack is often implemented using an array, but can also be created using object-orientated techniques. A queue, on the other hand, is a linear data structure. Items are enqueued at the back of the queue and dequeued from the front of the queue. Once again, it's also possible to peek at the front item without deleting it. Imagine a supermarket checkout. The customer at the front of the queue is served first and new customers join at the back. By nature, a queue system also allows for people to jump the queue. In the field of computer science, we call this a priority queue. In special circumstances, new items can join at the front of the queue. A queue is therefore known as a first in, first out or FIFO structure. The back pointer, sometimes called the tail pointer, always points to the last item in the queue. The front pointer, sometimes called the head pointer, always points to the first item. Any attempt to enqueue an item in a full queue is called a queue overflow. Meanwhile, trying to dequeue an item from an empty queue is called a queue underflow. Both of these outcomes should be considered before attempting to enqueue or dequeue an item. Queues, once again, can be implemented using an array or object-oriented techniques. Here we're using a linked list. So we've got a quick comparison summary on the screen there. You might like to pause the video and just take some notes. But as we said, all of this has been a recap. If you want detail, go back and watch the videos under SLR 14. As we often say in our videos, there are many ways you can implement a stack or queue in any one given programming language. Just because you come across one version in a textbook or exam paper, that doesn't mean another version isn't equally as valid. Any implementation of a stack is valid if it can carry out all the operations of a stack as shown here. Likewise, any implementation of a queue is valid as long as it can carry out all the operations of a queue. Let's consider the example of adding, 
or pushing a new item onto a stack. If we're using a static array, the steps to perform a successful push operation could be check the stack and output an error if it's full, increment the stack pointer, insert the new data item at the location pointed to by the stack pointer. The pointer doesn't necessarily have to point to the top item in the stack though. You could choose to implement it so the pointer is always pointing to the next available space. If you chose to implement a stack like this, you would just need to code it differently. For example, when pushing a new item, you would add the new item to the location being pointed to and then increment the top pointer. Looking at our pseudocode here, that would involve swapping over two lines of code. Further changes to the code would be required, but the implementation would still be perfectly valid. As we mentioned earlier, you may choose to use object oriented techniques and implement your stack using a dynamic linked list. Doing so would result in very different code compared to a version based on a static array. However, it wouldn't make it any less valid, providing it performed as a stack should. If we were taking this approach, the pseudocode for pushing an item onto a stack might look like this. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. Can you successfully implement adding data to and remove data from both stacks and queues using a high level programming language of your choice? We know that getting to grips with data structures and all the algorithms associated with them is a very tricky area of the course. And so we've produced a book called Essential Algorithms for A-Level Computer Science that's available on Amazon. It covers all the data structures you need to know about, along with the algorithms you need to perform on them, and it covers all the exam boards. We overview each data structure, discussing its typical applications and the operations you can perform on it. We provide a QR code that jumps off to a useful page of additional resources. We then take each data structure and the algorithms you need to perform and present them first in simple structured English, then in a diagrammatic format, then in pseudocode, and finally we present you with fully coded algorithms which you need to cover on the data structures in both Python and VB so you can actually code them up and practice them yourselves.